Well, hello, teachers. We are so excited to be here. I'm here with Lewis McClendon, my friend and mentor, and just so grateful for him. And Lewis, when you sent this uh, email to me with the with the lesson, uh, it said how to make wise decisions, and I said, "Man, I need this one. This is yeah. a, this is a lesson I need." And I I don't know. I'm sure you do. You need it too. And you told me um, as we talked about it that this is another one of those learning from bad examples thing. Right. Um, right. So. Um, I am going to play the part of someone who has no idea what 1 Kings 12 is about because I haven't had a chance to even read it yet. But I can see your objective statement. We can make wise decisions by learning from, uh, fr by learning from the following four statements. So we're going to hear four statements that describe what's going on here. But could you just clue me in? I, what, what's going on in 1 Kings 12? Right. Well, we're having the transition now between Solomon and Rehoboam. And okay. so Re Solomon's out of the picture. Rehoboam is the king. And Rehoboam is Solomon's son? He's Solomon's son. Okay. And he's, he's the one that Solomon chose to be king. Okay. And so they're going to go down to Shechem. And in Shechem, they're going to anoint him as king. But he's going to face a question where he has to make a decision that he's not going to do well with at all. Okay. And <laughs> he's going to pay a big price. Uh, the nation of Israel is going to pay a big price. It's, it's really going to be bad. But... If we look at what he did wrong and reverse it, then we can we can get some help out of this. But Absolutely. one big caveat to this whole thing is okay. this is a fulfillment of God's judgment on Solomon because God had said, I'm going to divide the kingdom in uh, you're going to live, but in your son's day, I'm going to divide the kingdom. But there's still some things he could have done right. Uh, in this situation, even even though that's a big part of what's taking place, and that that does not mean that um, I, I I hope I I think you'd agree. I mean, God is not uh, this is not determinism where God has made this person to sin. No, Rehoboam, not at all. Rehoboam still was responsible for his actions. Right, and we will definitely see that in this lesson about the okay. things he does wrong. Yeah, he's definitely responsible, and even you know. What you learn over and over in the Bible is, is God does make judgments, but when people plead for mercy, things do change. You know, right. when, when people repent, there is a difference. And, and I will say this in, this in the lesson later on the lesson, that who knows what would have happened differently if Rehoboam would have confessed his sin and the nation's sin. I mean, it could have been a different outcome altogether. So, yeah, he's 100% responsible. <laughs> well, you, you kind of, what's interesting, I'm, I'm just reading here, you're, you're putting... Uh, verse 1 as a, as a start, and Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel were come to Shechem to make him king. So now we have a context, scripture. Right. Here's the objective statement that you make. We can make wise decisions by learning from the following four statements. The first statement is, listen to requests. So right. uh, actually listen. That's a good, that's a good idea. Verse right. 3, <laughs> verse 3 that they sent and called him and Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam saying, they, thy father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore make thou the grievous service of thy father and his heavy yoke, which he put upon us lighter and we will serve thee. Interesting. Uh, here's the request. Right. Lower the taxes. <laughs> Lower the taxes. Who, who would have thought such a thing could happen? You know, it sounds familiar. And, and so they, they come to him with, with this request. I'm sure he wasn't prepared for this. We can see it by the way he responds. He wasn't really prepared for this. But there's no question that the burden that King Solomon had put on them was very grievous. And, and I try to list some of the details of it so that, that this is not just an idle thing or spoiled people or, you know, they had, they had grounds for what they were saying. Okay. Because, you know, his building projects were, were heavy, you know, seven years on the temple, 13 years on his houses. He built stables and chariots. And I even put it here, uh, he built with costly stone. And it was really interesting to me that in 1 Kings 7, 9, 10, 11, three times you see the word costly. That, you know, he's building with the best stuff. He's not just building. You know, he's building with the best stuff out there. Government spending. Yes, exactly. No <laughs> accountability whatsoever. Right. And then he had this huge daily food allotment where people are bringing him 185. This is a day per day. 185 bushels of flour, 375 bushels of meal, 10 oxen, 20 cows, 100 sheep and deers and all these other kind of things. I mean, and 
there's a rotation system, but but when the rotation came up, you did this for a month. This is what you're providing by the month. And, and then wow. you, you add to that the forced labor where they were making them go and work in, in so many days where they were gone. So you add that to that. And then just Solomon's lavish lifestyle, his lavish lifestyle. I mean, I put the verses in Ecclesiastes 2, 4 through 10. But you know all the things that's in Ecclesiastes about how he went after. And then in verse 10, he says, whatever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. So, I mean, he had all this, and then he's just living the life he wants to live. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that, again, kind of sounds familiar. Um, yeah. yeah. But not to make this political, but yeah. So, so what you're, you're making the case that their request was not out of bounds. I mean. At, at all. Not at not all. The, no, no, not was not okay. And so, and and so then then you ask the question. I see that. Um, do you describe yourself as a good listener? Right. James one nineteen. Wherefore, my beloved brother, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. So here, they're asking Ray Bowman, "Hey, can you just bring down the lifestyle a little bit and let me <laughs> let us serve you?" But let's do it. And so then now we, that leads us as number two, the second statement, do, do proper research. Right. So he doesn't listen to them. I mean, he okay. doesn't care about their request. But he says something that sounds good. Because in verse five, he says, you depart for, yet for three days and then come again, the people departed. And I, I can't tell you exactly what he was doing here. That's why I kind of think he may have been blindsided by this whole thing. Right. Okay. And, but he gave some people hope, you know. I mean, hey, he's going to think about this. Maybe he really listened to us, but he didn't. And, and, as, a, and as a leader, I kind of recognize this tactic because oh, sometimes sure. people will catch you after Sunday school class teachers or um, as a pastor, they'll catch you. Hey, I've got this great idea. And you don't want to be so hasty as to have to have, answer the question right, right then. You got to right. have time to process. And so that's not a bad thing. But it, no. But he didn't. He didn't have a good reason for it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so and then is, verse six. He, yeah, he's not going to do proper research like he's like it sounds like he's going to do. Right. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father when he yet lived, and he said, "How do you advise that I may answer this people?" And they spake unto him, saying, "If thou wilt be a servant unto the people this day, and wilt serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, to them." They then they will buy, uh, be thy servants forever. Right. Yeah. So he's made two good statements. One, let me think about this for three days, like he's really going to think about it. Right. And two, he goes to the old men, and the old men were his father's advisors. And but you can tell that his father's advisors had listened because they were parroting what the people were saying. Listen, there's a problem here that you really knew, do need to deal with. And but he just he rejects it just out of hand. I mean, he doesn't even, he doesn't ask a question. He doesn't do anything. He just rejects it in verse eight. Yeah. Uh, forsook the counsel of the old men, which they had given him. Yeah. And then, and then he goes, to, <laughs> this is kind of funny. He goes to the young men. Right. <laughs> oh, young guys. What are you going to do with them? What are you going to do with them? Yeah. But, but what you have to understand about these young men is that they grew up with Solomon. These are the people he knew he grew up with. Now, you know, go back to their you upbringing. You mean with Roy Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, go back to how they grew up together. They grew up together in Solomon's household in a lavish lifestyle. I mean, they have been living in the lap of luxury. And so you've got guys, not these old men, they had had to work, you know, they'd had to perform and get things done and all that kind of stuff. But these guys have just been living with Ray Boehm and they're his cohorts. And so they've lived this lavish lifestyle and they're not going to lose it. <laughs> so their pro the proposal is austerity, right? Their proposal right. is right. Yeah. is yeah. <laughs> is let's let's cut back on the benefits. And they're going, no, this is our time. You know, yes. why would we cut back now? Yeah, right. right. And they are so arrogant that they say, not only are we not going to lighten your load, we are going to make your load heavier. <laughs> They could have at least left it the same, but not no. Right. They want more. They want more. Yeah. And that's and, where he says that you said there, verse 10, Thus shalt thou speak to this people, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, 
but make thou it lighter unto us that thus thou shalt say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my <laughs> father's loins. You thought it was bad not then. Right. It, you ain't seen nothing yet. Verse 11, and now whereas my father did laid you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father hath chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. <laughs> and, and what a statement to make to people who are really saying, hey, if you don't respond correctly to this, we're going to rebel. Because they've said, we'll serve you with this condition. And they right. come across saying, our stated goal is to chastise you. And when it says scorpions there, scorpion was the name of a whip where they use metal pieces in it. So okay. they say, it's not just going to be a whip. It's going to have metal pieces in it. Our, we, are, we are going to come after you. What a threat to those people. Yeah. So, so, so in this particular instance, um, the research he should have done was to, to get more data. Is that what you're saying? Like he should have talked to more people. Well, it was good that he talked to the old man. He should have listened. what he should have done. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But I think, a... but see, I think he was just biased in his research. You know, when he did research, it was biased research. And he went to the old man and he says, nope, not going to do that. He went to the young man and says, yep, I'm going to do that. You know, and that leads to us in how that we do research and to take a step back and say, when we are asking people questions about our decisions, are we just trying to get people to agree with us? Um, or are we really trying to find out what's going on so that so I can make a wise decision? Because, you know, all of us have people that will agree with us. I mean, not in a bad way, but they're for us and they want us to succeed. And, oh, yeah, try that. But, you know, all of us need people that will talk honestly to us and tell you the truth. You know, people need that. We need people that can feel like they can speak to power. You know, I know you're my boss or, or whatever, but this is what I think really ought to be done here. I found to be the case too. And I, I, we talked a little bit before that I'm, I'm kind of in this new spot of being, you know, the, the, the senior pastor. And what I found to be the case is I have to invite it because people, yes. you have to invite the feedback because people aren't the kind of people you need to talk to you uh, about and, and to challenge you on things are not always going to do it unless you invite them to do it. Exactly. And, and that's an atmosphere that you create. That's right. There is an environment there. And so obviously that leads to if if you don't do it, then you can't do number three. And right. Number three <laughs> is make wise ruling. Oh, the and way so, he handles yeah, this horrible. <laughs> so Jeroboam and all the people, this is verse 12. So Jeroboam yeah. and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day as the king had appointed, saying, come to me again the third day. And so, yeah, they're basically doing what he prescribed for them to do. Right. Verse 13. But the key is, yeah, 13. That's the key. And the king answered the people roughly. Roughly, yeah. And forsook the old men's counsel that they gave him and spake to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made you your yoke heavy, now under your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. What, what's interesting there is it's almost <laughs> a quote. He, he literally says word for word what they said right he's come he's completely bought into their advice which makes me think remember these are the guys he grew up with they this was in the planning all along this was their agenda when you become king this is the way it's going to be so the whole thing of let me give me three days and i'm going to listen to the old men it sounds good but just like you say the parroting of those exact words mean this was the agenda all that, along. that was what they're going to do Right. Therefore, the king hearkened not unto the people, for this co for the cause was from the Lord, that he might perform him saying, which the Lord spake by Abijah the Shil uh, Shilonite unto Jeroboam the son of Nebat. Right. And I think he really ignored his father's advice. You know, you see there, Proverbs 15, 1, a soft answer turneth away wrath. <laughs> but, and that's not happening here. Read your dad's book, man. <laughs> you know? Right. He's the old man, though. <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, man. And, and arrogance just knows nothing about gentleness and kindness. I mean, when you get to that place, and that's the place I believe that they're at, um, it knows no gentleness. You know, I'm going to live this leverage lifestyle, and you're going to do whatever it takes so that I can have what I want. That's, that's the arrogant feeling that you get from this. No, not only was it a bad decision, but the way it was communicated was poor. Right. It wasn't just that it was a bad 
it wasn't it yeah it, it was bad in multiple layers yes yes <laughs> and this is a very dangerous thing to tell people who are saying if you do this we will serve you <laughs> right right you don't know your audience <laughs> he's setting himself up for failure now okay. here, if we do listen and do the right research and make wise decisions then number four we'll experience the good results right. that's not what happens here verse 12 yes. or verse 16 so when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto him, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel, now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. But as for the children of Israel, which dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then king Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was over the tribune, and all Israel stoned him with stones that he died. Therefore, King Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. Right. The buffet got shut down, didn't it? Oh, big time. And he, <laughs> yeah. just, he just continually compounds what he's doing. Because when it says over the tribute, the tribute was the conscription of those people yeah. that were serving. Right. You know, that, that's what Adoram did. And I, I showed in the notes there to go back to uh, First Kings, that he this is the guy that was in charge of the conscript, conscription and the bringing the money and all this kind of stuff. That's not the guy you send to negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. He sends a really bad negotiator, and he ends up running for his life. Wow. And that guy died. And then, and then Rehoboam runs for his life. Yeah. I, but it says made speed. <laughs> right. You know, probably zero to 60 in his chariot per, went pretty fast. <laughs> right. Um, we see here, um, you bring up, uh, in this note, in these notes, Jonah. Right. What does Jonah have to do with this? We're well, help us understand that. Like we started talking about at the beginning, we know that God's judgment is on Israel and the kingdom is going to be divided. We know that's what God said. Right. But, but when we have God's judgment and, and I bring up Jonah because in Jonah, it said, uh, the God's going to destroy the city. You have right. 40 days, and Nineveh's going to be overthrown. Right. But then it says, so the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. For the word of the Lord came with the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and set in ashes. And it caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king of the nobles, saying, let neither man nor beast nor, uh, nor herd nor flock taste anything let them feed, nor let them not feed nor drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone to his own evil way, turn from his own evil way and the violence that is at his hand. Now, verse nine, who can tell if God will turn and repent? And I'm not saying I know what God would have done if he had repented, but right. I just know that when Solomon dedicated the temple, he said, when you're in trouble, you pray to the temple, listen to them. Right. And so we know that we have God's judgment on it, but there could have been a better result than he faced if he had repented and said, Lord, tell me what to do and I'll do what you want me right. to do. Right. Wow. And God, we know obviously in the Jonas situation that God did change. Uh, yeah. At least from man's perspective, God did right. uh, do that. And so, man, that, that's amazing. So, you say here, you know, seek God's wisdom for all decisions. Um, James Which he says, we, no evidence that he did that at all. Right. Seek and accept godly counsel. I, right. Lewis, I'm, not, I'm now asking you, uh, I might as well learn from making these videos, right? Like this is a good thing. <laughs> um, I know that there, I know there's a, there's wisdom in a multitude of counselors, counselors but there can be, obviously here, there's a right, there's a right kind of counselors to ask, and there's the wrong kind of counselors to ask. Yes. Um, how, in your own personal life, how do you decide who to ask what decisions? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, how, how did you, how do you, you've done a great, great job. You've, you've been successful in ministry. How did you know who to ask? Well, what I tried to do was to make it a, a broad spectrum. And so I would always like to make sure I was asking old and young because I believe they both had value. And I would have to temper some of the young because they don't know the full ramifications of their decisions. But I still felt like it was important for me to hear from them. 
But I go back to what I said before, is creating that environment. And one thing I really worked hard with the people that I went to for advice and counsel was to say, I want to honestly talk to you about this, but I want to have a kind of relationship with you that if I don't do what you say, we're still friends. So I was trying to say, I need old, I need young, I need people. Sometimes I would ask this one person just one time for something because he had an expertise in that that didn't come to play before that. But I always set up the environment was, I truly am seeking, I truly want to know, but I don't want our friendship to be affected if I choose a different uh, right. road than you're, you're advising. Right, right. And of course, you're, I would think that this is kind of goes without saying, you're asking people that, in, inherent in your answer, you're asking people that have an expertise in something. Right, right. You know, you're not asking the broke guy for investment advice. You're asking the guy exactly. that has some money. And exactly. You're asking the builder about building things and not necessarily about um, church things. You know, right. that's, that's how that works, yeah. So it wasn't like I had this group of people that I went to with everything. Right. It was, for this decision, I need to talk to this group of people, which would include, include old and young, which would include people with expertise, or people have been down the road before or whatever. That, that's, that's really good. Th this is a sad story, Lewis. Yes. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Um, I mean, but you say here, I think actually, I, I guess I just quoted you, actually. Yeah. This is a sad, sad story. If we do not want our story to be sad, we need to learn to make wise decisions. Um, Lewis, some of the people that um, are going to teach this lesson are going to do it um, – with people that have already made bad decisions, how do you think? Um, how do you think you teach a lesson, knowing that some of those people are? And I mean, how do you apply this to? Right, and and that really goes back to part of the introduction where, where we start out by saying um, most of us can think of a time where we made a bad decision. So right. we, first of all, we include ourselves. Right. You know, all of us have. All of us. We don't necessarily have to tell them exactly the stupid thing we did. <laughs> yeah. But we include ourselves <laughs> in that. And we can say, for me, I want to I want to make the wisest decisions I can make. And so in the past, I haven't made the best decisions. But moving forward, I can say, if I apply these four statements, I can make better decisions. It's a good plan. It's a good plan. So we got four steps. We're going to go to the top. We're going to repeat them. The four, the four statements, I'm sorry, yeah. listen to requests, do the proper research, make wise rulings, experience good results. And of course, one of the things that we want to include in here um, that we're talking about doing the proper research and making wise rulings is it's good to seek the Lord on some of this stuff too. And right, that's, yeah, right. And that, like, that's definitely that's, incorporated that's, here. Yeah. yeah uh, I mean, that's, and I gave that verse, that's the beginning of wisdom. Absolutely. You know, that's the foundation of it to begin with. That's exactly right. Well, Lewis, this is a good lesson. I hope that this video has helped some, some people not only to uh, be ready to prepare to, to give it, but also, hey, we're doing life. I, we need all our teachers to make wise decisions. Right. And yeah. I know I need to make wise decisions. So <laughs> Me too. I, uh, this, is a good, this is a good plan. Can we pray? You bet. God, we love you so much. Thank you for... Um, for this bad example <laughs> help us to be wise help us to get good advice and to do the right research but god help us um to seek you first and foremost and that you would bring across just the right people as we lead in our churches and our classes and our businesses and homes god help us to follow you and and uh and make wise decisions we love you in jesus name amen amen